Welcome to Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. This is the third of three episodes dedicated to potential snake effigies in Gilbert Hills State Forest, Foxborough, Massachusetts. This is the largest of all three at 600 feet in length. It is curved around in, the, a, in a wall shape, stone wall shape, leading up to this headstone. The three effigies we've filmed all have one thing in common. They're very close to bodies of water that either last year round or for a significant part of the year. So all three of them are very close to water. Snake effigies are known to be um, ceremonial and in relationship to agriculture, relationship to the underworld, and we are going to delve into the possibility that this snake effigy represents some uniqueness and it has essentially, potentially, all of the necessary features and, and structures to be ceremonial embedded right into the body of the snake. Up here we see the headstone. I would argue, uh, although on the other side, we'll see it when we go uh, up the wall in a minute, but the eye would be here. This is a ledge you can imagine and, and other snake effigies in the research that we're relying on for, from Connecticut and Rhode Island they noted eyes in the in the snake effigy quite often. One could see here potentially a stone. I didn't put the one there for a dramatic effect, but certainly uh, would rest there. You've got a cut here for the nose and then the mouth on the bottom, very well rounded and wraps right around the tip of the stone. So with that, let's uh, take a look and walk the entire length of this 600 foot structure and we will go bit by bit, looking for the type of features we've seen in the research. And we're looking for the features such as niches. We've done a separate episode on niches, but that is where uh, objects, offerings would have been left to potentially attract the spirit from the stone itself. Um, we are looking for V-shaped notches, which would represent a portal to and from the underworld. We also look for holes, intentional holes built into the wall for spirits potentially to move through. That, and we're going to find a couple other features that I think you'll recognize from other videos, all embedded in this potentially very special snake effigy. Let's go. Okay, the beginning here, or the end, if you will, the tail, <clears throat> is pretty broken down on this large snake effigy. And I think in part it's because of this uh, drainage ditch that was done likely in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps. So we don't actually get a sense here of how the tail ended, whether we would see a similar uh, trapezoidal stone as we saw on the first two. For the first 50, 60 yards, it's like this. There's not much going on. It's essentially one row, maybe two stacked stones. A um, couple things to keep in mind, similarities to the other snake effigies at Gilbert Hills State Forest is that this is very close to a body of water up by the head. However, a big difference here is that this curve. So you can already see the curvature of that stone wall coming up here and bending off to the left. And it's at this point in this structure where it carries over its first boulder, do we start to see some options for features. As you can see up to here, pretty much just one too high. We get to this embedded boulder down here, there, and we see the first of what very likely could be a niche. And I say that because we're seeing two stones stacked here, two stones stacked here, and this top stone here. Clearly this is made for the space. With this large, pretty large top stone, I would say that's probably almost a hundred pound stone by itself. Okay, we carry down and as we go along, we begin to see 
more and more features here. Again, from a niche standpoint, you're looking for a strong top stone with space built in underneath. You have that type of structure here. We're also looking for intentional gaps in the wall, like that one right there. Around those gaps, we would be looking for stones with an L shape or V shape cut in them, like that one there. Reiterate what we said at the open, those niches, while they can be portals to and from the underworld in and of themselves, they also can be there for offerings to entice the spirit to move through a certain space. The notches themselves, the V-shaped notches, they're definitely intended to be portals, as well as intentional holes to through the stone. So I'm also going to point out a couple or a handful of um, situations here where you can see the intent of the structure. Um, this stone probably didn't necessarily need to be there. Look how small that is, size of a medium-sized oyster. But it was there to keep this top stone in place for whatever reason. We're going to see a handful of scenarios just like that. We also see now this carrying over a second embedded boulder. So that rock line carrying up top. And you're going to see now at a very interesting structure. We're going to look at it from this side first. You can see a chamber down in there. A strong top zone. So you could begin to think of that as a, another niche. But something that we didn't say that we were looking for at the opening here is evidence of a split stone cairn. So this would represent a split stone cairn. These are the split stones, probably quite natural feature. Hey, tall. And then you see stones in through here, creating this open space, stones inside the split stone structure to make a split stone cairn. Um, so the combination of split stone cairn and a niche uh, also often uh, a, an event so associated with passage to and from underworld in ceremonies. It's, an, it's important to note the underworld was not seen necessarily by Native Americans like we see it being uh, where you go if you don't live a good life and it's the source of all things e evil. The underworld had uh, as much to offer as the upper world. Here's another nice gap in these stones, clearly intentionally made. This is the first of two openings here, and you can see the stones pushed off to the side. So whether this was created originally or it was created by a lot of the quarrying, that was happening here. Presumably uh, the stones that were quarried out of here in the 17-1800s were brought down, dragged by horse, and, uh, and there are a number of trails you can see in this area where they were designed to be moving large stones on a one-way path downhill. So that break could represent a, uh, a passage for quarrymen. Now as we get closer, we're past the halfway point, we're going to see the features of this snake effigy uh, become a little more dense, a little closer together.
This is the second break in the wall. Same pushed away stone structure you saw before. Um, I'd also mention that there's a fair amount of undulation in a lot of the stone, particularly as they carry over those embedded boulders you saw before. Uh, that is not uncommon for snake stone effigies. Now we begin to see some more intentional openings. This one here. All right, we're coming up to probably the most feature packed part, 10 or 15 feet of this entire structure. Come up to stone here, intended to be parallel to the ground. We can see inside here, it's actually lifted up and held in place by this little stone here, which happens to be different than the rest in that it's reddish stone with embedded quartz crystals, keeping this up off the ground and a gap here. Could be an open space, could be a niche. As we proceed over to the next spot, something I believe would be a niche, this flat stone here. If you're placing an offering, you've got stones right here to hold it up. It is being suspended in the air off this stone here, so intentionally placed to be parallel to the ground. We've got another stone just over it with embedded quartz crystals again. An opening here. Looking for that L-shaped spot to depict a portal. We might certainly have that here. This line goes directly to sunrise at the spring equinox. This line here, if you're looking straight through here, sunrise at the winter solstice. And last but certainly not least, something that we might not necessarily expect to find here, and it's a little tough to see, underneath this rock, but it's this rock here. And that would be a shoulder, a neck, and another shoulder in the stone here. This stone could be, and would be consistent with a Manitou stone in that configuration. So, from that point there, that pair of that that stone parallel to the ground to here, very feature rich location with a number of uh, objects that would be consistent with the embedded ceremonial structures we were looking for here in a, in a snake effigy. All right. There's a spot here I find interesting just because <laughs> of some of the use of stone, uh, but it almost looks like there's something that is held into place in this feature itself. I have no idea what that would be. I'm not sure if you would try to make out a head, a body, legs, and two arms, but the interesting thing about these stones here is they are parallel and they are of the same structure. Uh, type so they're thin and they're pointed in parallel sitting in this shape I really don't know what to make of that, but I thought I would point it out because I find it found it eye-catching Along the way, so we're traveling up here. We're near at the very end of the wall 
I'm going to find one more structure at the very end before it dips down to ground level and we go to the head. But you have here another intentional gap. There. And we proceed up and see the some stones below, at or below what's now the ground line. And we come up to the head from this angle. It's not great with the shadow, but you would make out a possible mouth there with an eye here from this side. And then over here, it gets a little different. That mouth carries around, but you have now a little possible ledge for an eye to this mouth and a nose, if you will, from that angle. And in that ledge, I didn't find one, but you can imagine consistent with some of the other serpent structures in the research that one could place a stone, a crystal there, as they've found representing eyes and snake effigies elsewhere. All right, that is our step-by-step -step of the 200-yard, 600-foot snake effigy here at Gilbert Hill State Forest. So to take a look back upon this video, coming back from the head of the effigy, we've got a variety of Features we wanted to see here, this would be an open space feature intentionally put in. Not sure what to make of this one, but thought it uh, deserved to be in the highlight reel. It's certainly interesting. This super important with uh, a niche. There's another slab suspended there. There was a V notch in there. We see here a uh, stone shaped like a Manitou stone. Another parallel slab to the ground held up by a quartz stone creating a space. Surprise feature here of a split stone cairn, and on the other side of the wall there, it appears to be a niche or a little chamber. Another open space spot here, where clearly open space was built into the architecture of this body. Possible niche, but a big stone slab parallel to the ground again. And then our first here, you can see two stones on each side holding up this large top stone. So to wrap this up, saw a variety of integrated features, possibly in what could be a 200-yard-long snake effigy.